with identity crisis, which we already talked about before, comes also what we cannot forget, the coping mechanisms. How do you deal with having an identity crisis? And there are different kinds of coping mechanisms, which we will not talk about all of them today, but we will talk about some of them. So let's talk about coping mechanisms. You do comedy also. Yes. Um, as you put it in your own words, and I love this, you're a stand-up comedian. Yes. Uh, I'm not sure how the stand-up goes because you're, uh, you're in a wheelchair, but that's probably the point of the whole thing, saying you're a stand-up comedian. Right. So but first of all, uh, yeah, it's, it's called stand-up comedy and I wasn't there when the term was invented, so that's just what it's called. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and, uh, and yeah, that's a, that's actually again like that's a good like gateway drug to open people up. Yes. <laughs> because like, I started out talking mostly about like my disability. Mm -hmm. Like usually, uh, when people meet me, they're sometimes curious, curious, and then they ask stupid questions, and so I give them stupid answers. And yeah. That's actually yeah. how I started doing comedy. Yeah. Like I would tell these stories to my friends, and they would laugh and tell me that it would be really funny if I would do this on stage. Okay. <laughs> And then I tried doing that like five years ago and I never yes. stopped. Yes. And so yes. now I'm a comedian. I have actually watched some skits of you. One can find them online and he's, he's really amazing. You know, he's really funny, you know. And I watched them and I couldn't help thinking. A lot of people also who are dealing with discrimination, who are dealing with intersectionality, uh, usually look for, like, like I said before, a safe space and all of this. Was comedy your kind of getaway to all from all this discrimination? Do you use comedy to deal with what you usually have to deal with in day-to-day -day life? Is that your way of replying all of this discrimination? I think uh, comedy for me was a way of therapy before I actually could afford therapy. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> like I started to realize that actually talking about this stuff in a funny way, made people realize, like, I realized that if I told the joke the right way, that mm -hmm. they would um, put themselves in my shoes and oh, then wow. get what was happening to me. Mm -hmm. And so I found this way of, of talking about stuff like that was really, really troubling, mm -hmm. but also to do that in a way that made people like laugh and understand that this shit is not okay. Or to think about I'm, it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And, uh, yeah, for me, it's definitely, it's, it is a coping mechanism humor. Yeah. Like, a lot of the people I meet don't have, haven't met other people with disabilities. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so, there are a lot of misconceptions that I have to get out of the way first. Yeah. And I, <laughs> of course, and of I, course. I, yeah. Yeah. It do be like that sometimes. And, mm -hmm. uh, and I learned that uh, humor can be a, a very good way to, like, to like first shock people and then make them realize, oh no, wait, this person is actually like, I've underestimated this person, I gotta be careful. And yeah, that's how you, how you can get it going. Yeah, I, I had this feeling about me. That's why I was also really comfortable to come up dressed like this. You know, also in Africa, we have all sorts of different ways of coping with tragedies, crises, and all of this. In fact, we dance when a child is born, we dance when you are getting married, we dance when you're being baptized, we dance when you're being buried. But I'm sure you have seen it maybe where people are actually carrying the coffin and doing a dance because it helps to make make the pain a bit lighter because you have a different way of expressing yourself, you know, so that always happens. Mm -hmm.